All right, it's time to prepare ourselves for the analog warfare between electrostatics and magnetostatics. Um, the statement says, notice the following parallel. The divergence of D is equal to zero, but the curl of E is equal to zero. Therefore, what we found was epsilon naught E is equal to D minus P. Meanwhile, the divergence of B is equal to zero and the curl of the auxiliary field equals zero. Okay, so we see the matter fields have different representations. Therefore, uh, mu naught H is equal to B minus mu naught M for no free current and no free charge, respectively. Thus, the transcription D goes to B, E goes to H, P goes to mu naught M, and epsilon naught goes to mu naught turns an electrostatic problem into an analogous magnetostatic one. Use this together with your knowledge of the electrostatic results to rederive um, A, the magnetic field inside a uniformly magnetized sphere, B, the inside of a sphere of a linear magnetic material in an otherwise uniform magnetic field, and C, the average magnetic field over a sphere due to the steady currents within the sphere. Oh boy, here we go. All right, so for part A, we want the... Um, field inside the sphere, right? The, so we know the electric field inside a uniformly polarized sphere is equal to negative 1 over 3 epsilon naught p. So if we translate this, we have h equal 1 uh, equals negative 1 over 3 mu naught times mu naught m. But we know that that simplifies to 1 third mu or 1 third m. Similarly here, we know after solving 4b, we get mu naught h plus m. So if we plug these all together, we get a final uh, field of two-thirds mu naught m, which is exactly what we expect. Pretty nice to see. For B, the electric field inside a sphere of linear dielectric, uh, of a linear dielectric in an otherwise uniform electric field was given as E equal 1 over 1 plus chi E over 3 E naught. Now, chi E translates to chi M, for then the polarization is equal to epsilon naught chi E E translates to mu naught m plus equals mu naught chi m h, or after you cancel the mu naughts, m equal chi m h. So let's go ahead and translate this through. What we see here is that uh, we get h equal 1 over chi m, 1 plus chi m over 3 h naught, pretty quick uh, parallel. But again, we know that b is equal to mu naught times 1 plus chi m h. So once we sh sh uh, sift that through, where B naught is equal to mu naught H naught. Now we can um, simplify this down. So the magnetic field inside a sphere of linear magnetic material and an otherwise uniform magnetic field is B over mu naught uh, time, or times one over, or excuse me, B over mu naught times one plus chi M is equal to, on the right hand side, which is one over one plus chi M over three, uh, B naught over mu naught, so the mu naughts cancel as you see, and we get the ratio we kind of expected and found before. All right, so now finally here, what we see is that for the average electric field over a sphere due to charges with, within is equal to negative one over four pi epsilon naught P, the uh, polarization, um, divided by R cubed. Let's pretend that the charges are all due to the frozen in polarization of some medium, whatever rho might be, and we can solve uh, that we know for the divergence of the polarization is equal to negative rho to find the appropriate polarization. In this case, there are no free charges and P is equal to the volume integral of big P, the polarization. So if we plug that in with the integral sake, now we have an expression of the E field in terms of the polarization P. Then we can translate this into the magnetic case, which is H av is equal to negative one over four pi mu naught times one over R cubed with the integral of mu naught M d tau, which just goes to little m. All right, fair enough. Um, but we're not done yet because we need to put this in terms of the magnetic field. And we know if we know that B is equal to mu naught H plus M, then B av is equal to mu naught over four pi little m r cubed plus mu naught M av. But M av is just little m over four pi uh, r cubed, the volume of a sphere. Go figure, it's a density equation. 
So once we plug these in and we simplify through, we see uh, pretty much everything we expect. And then we end up with the BAV is equal to mu naught over four pi 2m r over r cubed, which is exactly what we found earlier. We must assume for this argument that all the currents are bounded though. Same thing, no free charge, no free current. But again, it doesn't really matter since we can model any current configuration by an appropriate frozen in magnetization. Nice little check and balance there, but it's definitely an analogy warfare right there with these two cases.